Well, hello and welcome to this Diwali special series on money control co-presented by Motilal Oswal. I'm Nandita Khemka. Well, we've been getting you views from a whole host of experts on what to expect in summer 2081 and which are the sectors and themes that you should be focusing in on. Well, today uh, I'm joined by Devin Choksi, who's the director at DR Choksi FinServe, with his views on where we are headed from here and what are the themes to be watching out for in summer 2081. Uh, Mr. Choksi, great to have you on our show. First of all, wishing you a very happy Diwali and hope you have a profitable year ahead. Uh, you know, going into this uh, Sambat, uh, you know, the mood is pretty sober, right? We've corrected quite a bit from record levels. And this Diwali, the markets will be keenly tracking several notable macro events that are set to take place this year. Further rate cuts supporting demand, rising prices of precious metals, geopolitical changes in the world due to wars. Will all this weigh in on uh, investment portfolio of investors? And with all these risks on the horizon, what are your expectations in terms of returns from the new Sambat? Wish you all happy Diwali and my prayers to God for blessing you all with highest level of health and prosperity. Uh, well, I think on one side you have got the baggage of problems that basically comes on the surface immediately. But on the other side, I think we are heading for a brilliant tomorrow. In the next 10 years, the world economy is changing big time. We are likely to see a significant amount of shift from current uh, environment of uh, and I think getting into the decarbonization era with the use of renewables. So this is one big opportunity which is getting created in the coming 10 years. Another big opportunity which is getting created similar to what it was in the decade of 90s is the opportunity in form of artificial intelligence. The artificial intelligence way of working is going to increase productivity for mankind is going to increase the possibility of higher life for the mankind is going to increase the possibilities of I think adding significantly large amount of uh, product and services going forward in a given time span. So frankly, I think this is another era in which we are entering into. And last but not the least, I think the economy as a whole, we are moving from uh, $4 trillion GDP to about uh, 10 to 12 trillion dollars GDP by 2035. And the market wealth is expected to grow from around 5 trillion dollars to about 12 trillion dollars. So all in all put together, I think it is summarizing into the per capita income for Indians in a range of around 9 to 10 thousand dollars as against around 2,800 dollars today, which is significantly going to add the uh, prosperity for the masses as a whole. So frankly speaking, if you ask me, next 10 years, the beginning of which is happening through this summer year 2081, are going to be the fabulous time as we are likely to see for our industries, our markets, and individually for all of us. Uh, point taken, Mr. Choksi, but you know, from a shorter term perspective, if I tell you to uh, speak about the next one year, uh, you know, what would you expect in terms of returns? Because uh, the previous year has been pretty phenomenal, right? The 28 to 29 percent kind of uh, returns on the index level. Uh, of course, it uh, you know you, you would not expect those kind of returns, but how much would you temper it down by? Well, it's a good guesswork, I would say, uh, because in the previous years we had the advantage of lower base and higher growth. In the current year onwards, I think we are already having the higher base and uh, moderate growth, uh, growth in line with the economic growth. So, from a perspective of looking at the growth now. And against 11-12% kind of a nominal GDP growth, the corporate earnings are expected to grow between 18-20% to 20 at the best. Now, if that is so, mm -hmm. then in that kind of a situation, you are not going to see a quantum jump in the growth. And so, I think there would be a challenge in form of giving the higher valuation because the growth rate is moderated. Second most important aspect in next four years from now, by 2028 or so, we are likely to see about 600 to 800 billion dollar worth of new companies tapping the market. Either existing companies raising money or new companies coming through IPO or FPOs. I guess I think this is new money which is being going to be taken away from the market. So existing listed stocks are likely to see their valuations getting moderated and the newer ideas maybe probably find mm. money into them. So this is also going to be a challenge. 
So in the near term, next one to two years, I would think that good quality stocks in the portfolio, you will get ample opportunity to buy at a reasonable price. And your focus should be on any of these kind of stocks in your portfolio for a journey of next 10 years. That is how I think we summarize the entire possibility. All right. So in terms of themes then, uh, you know, since autos are in a cyclical slowdown for, from FMCG earnings, the trend that has emerged is that, you know, urban demand, uh, you know, may be slowing down, although rural has been witnessing an uptick. So, uh, and you know, at a time when overall everything is so expensive, which are the themes that you would be really bullish on for the new Sambath? It's an important question. And I guess I think more, more than a theme, I think you should be looking at individual uh, companies within the respective sectors. For example, I think we find the metal as a commodity would probably have phenomenally good run going forward, largely because of the fact that uh, infrastructure led spending is happening in India, of course, but at the same time, I think the other economies of the world are not leaving themselves behind, largely because of the challenges posed by the AI challenges posed by the uh, requirement of computing uh, to begin with. So infrastructure is going to be invested in. That is one thing very, very clear. Second thing, we are likely to see the emergence of new vehicles, which is uh, the flex fuel as we call it as at the same time, I think the electric vehicles. Now this is also going to invite significantly large amount of investment. So there also the focus should be on uh, the focus should be on in the area of uh, engineering and R&D companies who are providing the solution to different uh, use cases, be it education, be it healthcare, be it e-commerce or for that matter, fintech. I guess I think these are some of the areas of businesses I think which are likely to see major amount of growth and the demand for uh, uh, the uh, demand for the uh, companies which are putting the IT based solution including AI and cloud computing is always going to remain high. Uh, selective pharma companies hmm. who will have a better time, particularly those who are in contract manufacturing or those who are in API supplies. I think they are also likely to remain well positioned. So selectively, I think the areas of focus will depend on, I think, which company is positioning itself in an era which is so demanding or likely to be so demanding going forward. Uh, all right, now let's break it down to uh, specific stocks then. You know, I, I know that Bajaj Finance is one of your uh, top Diwali picks. Uh, the stock has underperformed given negative returns over the last one year. So what's the rationale behind choosing this stock? So, yes, you have brought in a very important point. I think in last two years, if you see, at the cost of quality, I think the market has had a tremendous rally in, I think, some of the companies which are not worthy of their financials or the fundamentals. They have rallied significantly in the market, but it is at the cost of some of the good quality stocks have been consistently performing. You mentioned the name of Bajaj Finance. The company has already crossed 3 lakh crore EUM. They have been growing at a steady pace of around 30% capital growth in the uh, EUM. And yet, this company has not performed on the stock market. So, whenever you see such a long period of non-performance, it is followed by, I think, extraordinarily high level of performance. That is what I saw the learning from the past in our investing. So in my viewpoint, I think if the fundamentals are in place, which are there in this company's case, I would think that the growth is going to be accelerated as far as the stock prices are concerned. People who up till now, I think, did not value the margin of safety will now probably put money behind margin of safety. And that's where the likes of NDFC Bank, Bajaj Finance, Reliance kind of names will come up for investing. Because they are fundamentally strong companies building larger base and having a growth proposition in place. So they would be having a sustainable earning to talk about even next five, ten years. So we like this kind of businesses from a sustainability point of view as well. All right. Last couple of questions, Mr. Choksi. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, when you were talking about themes that metals uh, should be on your radar. Now with China rolling out stimulus and planning more, has the outlook uh, improved for the coming year? And which stock do you really like from this space? See, these stimuluses do have the positive impact and they too also have negative impact. Uh, on one side, I think the positive impact would be felt on the commodity prices because commodity prices which up till now were beaten down, I think could possibly find themselves a little bit more steady. So you are likely to see the steadier steel price and that is I alluded by saying that I think metal commodity is relatively more stronger in coming period. Uh, but on the other side, I think if the commodity price is ruled high, I think it is also affecting the demand growth in the economy as a whole. So it cuts both ways. In my viewpoint, 
I think at the current uh, crude oil prices, which I believe that I think should sustain between 65 to 75 to a dollar per barrel. Uh, and I think assuming that uh, in next six, nine months time, we are likely to see the positive outcome on the war front between Russia, Ukraine, and also Israel and uh, Iran. So all in all put together, I think if the war, of, war front activity subsides and crude oil prices stay between 65 to 75 dollars per barrel, I would think that uh, metal commodity as a whole, as a pack, will certainly have relatively better time because structurally the input cost is coming down due to the mix of renewable power into their portfolio, which is a significant amount of saving that they would have eventually. So we remain distinctly positive about metal commodity as a whole, uh, be it with China stimulus or otherwise. Or any stocks that you like from the space? Yeah, the names would be there. I think you we build the portfolio with names like Vedanta, we build the portfolio with names like Tata Steel, mm -hmm. NMDC. They remain relatively stronger players in the coming environment. And that's where probably I think you may want to keep uh, your focus on this kind of companies for a relatively longer period of time. All right. And lastly, how would you really play the uh, gold theme right now? I mean, of course, it's been a sparkling year for gold. We've been hitting uh, uh, record highs consistently, right? So, would you play it through stocks or would you play it through physical gold or should one look at SIPs or ETFs? How would you play the entire gold theme right now? So, I think to me, the gold as an asset class, I think, uh, is only an alternative because of uncertainties. Moment the uncertainty subsides, hmm. the uh, gold as an asset class, I think, doesn't appreciate as much as uh, the other asset class, which is equity. Uh, we believe that equity is a preferred route because the world economy is asking for higher amount of growth. And that's where I think the larger money is being collected from capital market segment by the global uh, the global corporates. Uh, so we feel that I think opportunities are extremely high when you get having some of the newer businesses coming up into markets for listing and eventually giving credit uh, or capital appreciation to investors. Uh, you, I do not know, I think, how would the gold play out if uh, in the next six months time you start getting the news pertaining to the calm down of war, etc. I do not know about that part. Mm. And so that is why I think I am wary of putting my money behind gold. I would rather keep my money behind equity, I think, which is far better asset class to me, which I understand far better than. All right, point taken, Mr. Choksi. On that note, we'd like to thank you for taking our time and joining in and, of course, wishing you... Mm -hmm. Once again, a very happy Diwali and a very prosperous New Year ahead. Yeah, wish you all the same. Happy Diwali once again and prosperous New Year.